Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, uh, let me to congratulate to the Power Electronics and Motion Control Conference to do the 50th anniversary, which is an important milestone for PMC community. And I am proud that I am a part of this community. Now let's back uh, to my today's speech. Uh, I will concentrate my, my attention today to the power electronics technology for distribution grids. I will start with a few words about the role of the power electronics in modern power generation and grids uh, from my perspective. And then I would like to concentrate uh, on uh, our idea about earth fault solution using power electronics based control at current source. This is the technology which uh, we developed for more than 10 years. That's a very important project for us, uh, which were uh, developed under confidentiality. And we are now at the moment where we are ready for a serial production. And we would like to share with you our experience with this technology. And this will be the main content of my today's speech. The power electronics play a very important role in modern power generation and power grids. It is one of the main innovation drivers in these technologies. In the power generation, it plays a key role in the new technology for generators, the drives for self-consumption systems, in the power and heating plants, and we can see in recent years the new power electronics technology also in nuclear power plant in the safety systems, which highlight the importance of this technology also under such a demanding uh, technology such as nuclear power plants. The power electronics obviously play an important role in the frequency conversion and play a very important role in the power source flexibility which is closely related to the installation and operation of energy storage systems in the power facilities, which is more and more often at the moment. In the power transmission, HVDC transition, uh, transmission play a very important role in modern power engineering. And I have to say that I didn't expect it in a couple of years uh, ago and we will go into such high voltages, high power range. That's amazing. In the future, not maybe so near, but uh, definitely in the future, the power electronics technology will play, in my opinion, an uh, important role in the power flow control. And let's go to the main point of my presentation. This is the power electronics and power distribution. The power electronics systems are inherent part of the low voltage uh, power grids. It play important role in the power routing, power quality, voltage control. We were talking about the power electronics or if you want solid state transformer technology, which Mariusz Malinowski mentioned uh, during his uh, yesterday keynote. Very important role plays power electronics in reliability in safety systems. Today I will be talking about earth flow compensation system, but the power electronics play a very important role in new grid diagnostic services and provide new services for digitalization of the grid and brings very important grid intelligence. The power electronics uh, going to, is going to play a very important role in the medium voltage uh, power grids and that's what I will be talking today. I will concentrate on uh, either isolated or high impedance grounded medium voltage power distribution grids, where the earth faults are the most common faults due to flashovers, uh, due to over voltages, insulator pollution, breakdown, contact with tree or birds. These phenomena are very well known. And uh, the earth faults play a very important role regarding uh, the reliability and safety of the power distribution grid. 
There is also the new phenomenon which is closely related to increasing parasitic capacity of the grid specifically in the large overhead lines and urban and suburban areas uh, operating the cable grids and that's one of the problems which the power distributors are facing at present. I think that uh, all of you are very familiar with single phase earth force theory just uh, to, to remind it, if we operate insulated or high impedance grounded uh, power distribution grids, the earth fault means that there exists a conductive path. Maybe I will try to. That there exists a. I'll use a laser pointer better. There exists a conductive part between one of the grid phases and the ground. And the fault current flowing to the place of the fault has two components, a capacitive component and active component. And we need to play with that and we are trying to mitigate uh, the fault current in the system uh, to operate, uh, still be able to operate uh, the grid under the earth fault. When the add fault uh, occur, uh, the vo voltage vector diagram changed, uh, the healthy phase to ground voltages uh, became the line to line voltages and we can uh, decompose uh, the, the final voltage uh, vector diagram into the positive sequence component and the zero sequence component, which, is, uh, the, which we will pay the main attention today. That's what we are trying to play when we would like to compensate uh, the, the earth fault. Just the equivalent circuit uh, under the earth fault, the single phase equivalent uh, circuit for the zero sequence component. Uh, we have uh, two feeders, the sound feeder, uh, the 40 feeder, and here you see the state-of-the-art solution uh, which we are using in the resonant uh, compensated grid. This is the arc suppression coil connected in between the neutral point of the distribution transformer and the, uh, and the ground. The functionality of the resonant grounding or arc suppression coil functionality can be explained in terms of the parallel resonance in between uh, the arc suppression coil and uh, the great parasitic capacitance or we can explain the functionality of the arc suppression coil in the form uh, of the current source. We can imagine uh, the arc suppression coil uh, as the source of the inductive current, you can see it here, uh, which is caused by zero sequence uh, voltage uh, on, uh, on that and this uh, inductive current which is uh, produced by the arc suppression coils acts again the fourth capacitive current. So this is the state of the art technology having several limits. So what are the limits which I see with uh, the arc suppression coil operation? Definitely one of the big, pro big problem is uh, residual current because the arc suppression coil is able to compensate only a reactive current component of the fault current and it is able to compensate only a fundamental component of uh, this fault capacitive current. The arc suppression coil is unable to compensate the active fault uh, current component and it is unable to compensate the higher harmonics in the fault current. The problem is also a complex tuning which is not an easy task uh, to tune uh, the arc suppression coil. The problem is also a compensation of uh, large power grids, uh, which leads uh, to low impedance grounding, having several consequences uh, within uh, the protection of such uh, power grid. The compensation current, which is produced by arc suppression coil, is always dependent on zero sequence voltage. The coil is often source of uh, harmonics when saturated and there is one important uh, drawback. The zero sequence current flows through the distribu distribution transformer and load it. 
So we have been thinking how to overcome these constraints of the state-of-the-art technology which is operated in uh, the power grids for more than 100 uh, years. And we came with uh, the power electronics based solution. We came with uh, the active current source which can operate together with uh, arc suppression coil or fully independently of arc suppression coil and can replace the arc suppression coil in the grid. Uh, the problem is how to calculate uh, the compensation current which behave based on the first uh, Kirchhoff's law. In, in this uh, note it means that if we will be able to produce a compensation current which will have the same magnitude like the fault current but opposite phase, then we will be able to mitigate the fault current and comp fully compensate uh, the ground fault uh, of the, of the power, in the power grid. We came with two fundamental ideas where to connect uh, our uh, fully controlled current source. The first and uh, we uh, we covered that with, with with the patents. So we have two international patents covering the, this technology, depending on the location of the current source in the power grid. The first possible location of the current source is that we can connect our controlled current source between the neutral point of the distribution transformer and the ground uh, and the ground. It is definitely a very cheap solution and uh, the current source can be simply connected to auxiliary winding of existing arc suppression coil and in this way we do not need uh, to, to put into the system any transformer and it leads to a further cost reduction. On the other hand, there is a plenty of drawbacks of this uh, location of the, the active current source compensated the the fourth current. This solution is not suitable for standalone compensation because we need an external power supply and it also brings us um, quite strict power limits. Moreover, the installation using arc suppression coil, the auxiliary winding of the arc suppression coils, leads uh, to the still problems with the resonant grounding so we did not uh, overcome one of the uh, problems of uh, the passive compensation of the fault current. The zero sequence current flows still through the transformer, obviously, and uh, there is uh, not possibility to, uh, to control the negative sequence component. And of course, we are unable to, uh, to provide the grid with the additional functionalities which the alternative solution uh, can offer. Therefore, we built the final prototype in this configuration. That's a configuration which I love and that's uh, the configuration when the active current source is connected between the phase conductors of the grid and the ground. It eliminates the drawbacks of resonant grounding. We can take the active power necessary for the operation of the device directly from the power grid, so we do not need any external source. And generally we have no power limits in this configuration. This device is suitable for distributed com compensation, which means that it can be installed anywhere in the grid we do not need a neutral point uh, for the installation of this device. All zero sequence currents float outside the distribution transformer and we can control uh, positive, negative as well as zero sequence component. And we can offer in this configuration additional functionalities such as active power filtering, uh, statcom functionality and many other fe uh, features. The penalty for this configuration is a uh, higher cost and we need an additional transformer to be able to connect this device into the grid. How the current source operates? The first figure which you see here is uh, the operation of the grid without uh, the ground fault. When the 
third fault occur, we can observe immediate uh, rise of the fault current, which has, uh, as I said at the beginning, two components, the capacitive one and the active one. And our current source start immediately to compensate uh, the fault current, producing the compensation current having the same magnitude and opposite phase. You can see how the compensation current uh, rise and uh, acts against the red fault current. And finally, we are able by the, our current source to fully compensate the fault current in the system. So that's uh, the idea how the system works and this is the simulation result. What we can see on the next uh, slide is that if we will operate only the arc suppression coil, the arc suppression coil is depending on the zero sequence voltage able to, to generate the inductive current which acts against the fault current which is in this quadrant. In our case, we are able to shift and adjust the compensation current and we are able to fully compensate the fault current including its active component as well as high harmonics, which is very important. The problem is, the idea is very simple, but the problem is how to calculate the compensation current. The compensation current can be calculated from the Kirchhoff's uh, current law in uh, this node and if we have a look on uh, the circuit configuration, the compensation current can be divided from uh, the known or measurable zero sequence voltage and the grid impedance. So if we will be able to know the grid impedance, then we are able to, uh, to calculate the compensation current generally for N feeders, generally for N feeders and M harmonics. And the forward current is equal to compensation current plus the zero sequence uh, current of all N feeders in a system. The problem is how to identify the grid impedance. Nevertheless, we have one big benefit. We have a current source installed in the system. Our power electronics converter is able to generate the testing signal by which we are able to identify in real time the grid impedance. We implemented uh, two possible uh, techniques, multi-frequency analysis, and we have the best experience with uh, the pseudo Dirac response analysis. It means that we inject into the grid uh, the pseudo Dirac impulse. We know uh, current impulse. We know its frequency composition and we measure the voltage response of the grid. We do the frequency analysis and based on the, these frequency analysis, we can calculate the grid impedance in the real time. And it makes us uh, possible to calculate uh, the necessary compensation grid, uh, current which we are generating by our device. Based on this idea, we develop it uh, in uh, RITSE a first prototype of this device having the rated power of 1.35 megavolt amps and this prototype is dedicated to be installed for the installation in the power grid with the rated voltage of 22 kV and offers a compensation current of 100 amps RMS. The device has two main components it is a compensation transformer and in our case uh, we develop it in the first generation a low voltage converter which is connected to the secondary winding of this transformer. The transformer has a, it is a three phase transformer with a star connected primary winding uh, which neutral point is grounded and we are operating a three independent if you want the separated secondary windings where our converters are connected. We came with a special design of the transformer which make us possible to optimize or properly uh, design 
the zero sequence impedance of the transformer by which we are able without any uh, intervention of the converter compensate part of the uh, fault current. In this prototype uh, we designed the, the transformer in that way that uh, the transformer is able to, to offer 40 amps of total compensation current of, which is of 100 amps. It means that we are able to, uh, to provide 40% of the compensation current without any necessary intervention by power converter which make us possible to save 30% of the silicon in the converter and it leads to a significant cost savings. The very important uh, feature of the, the configuration is also that we uh, operate uh, the system significantly under tuned. That it means that the reason and frequency given by zero sequence impedance of the transformer acting uh, with a great uh, capacitance is significantly below uh, the, the, the operated frequency of the grid, which has the positive impacts in the reduced asymmetry of the grid and the reduced the zero sequence component of the voltage. So here, this is just for illustration how we are creating the compensation current. If there is a earth fault, uh, there is a fault current IF, this uh, red vector, which we are compensating partially by the transformer. So uh, the, the orange uh, vectors are particular currents uh, generated by particular phases of the transformer and remaining part of the compensation current is generated uh, by the converter which is connected to the secondary winding of our transformer. Speaking in numbers, uh, the converter is able to generate 20 amps of the compensation current per phase. So it means uh, that 60% of the total compensation current is in the case of our prototype produced by the power electronics converter and remaining 40% uh, secure the transformer. This ratio can be adjusted by the uh, transformer design, so if we need to save more silicon, we can. Just a brief idea how our converter looks like. It is a three-phase converter where we are using a modular topology with the fundamental building blocks uh, of, with uh, the rated power of 150 kVA, which make us possible easy scaling of our device and uh, we are operating uh, in uh, our prototype three um, fundamental building blocks uh, uh, in parallel and they are connected via an LCL filter to a secondary winding of uh, the converter transformer. A few words about the control. Uh, we have uh, several control modes. A positive sequence components are controlled in rotating reference frame DQ, which is uh, linked with the grid voltage, while the zero sequence component is controlled by a proportional resonant controller. We have two master control loops. The first one is the, the control of the DC link of our converter, which commands uh, the active component of uh, the positive sequence current. And uh, the master control, which is responsible for the generation of uh, reactive component of zero sequence, of positive sequence component, in case when uh, the stat confactionality is demanded and the master control is also responsible for the generation of the compensation current command. How the compensation current is uh, generated? We do the online estimation of the parasitic capacitance and parasitic resistance of the grid as I explained it using the pseudo direct impulse and we measure a zero sequence voltage. 
With these known parameters, we are able to calculate the fault current, having the reactive part and having an active part. The fault current is partially compensated by the transformer. This current can be calculated from the zero sequence uh, impedance of the transformer and the known uh, zero sequence voltage. And remaining part of the compensation current, it means uh, when we subtract uh, the compensation current generated by the transformer from the total fault current, we get the command for the generation of the compensation current by our converter. We had the several levels of the testing of our prototype. First, we started with the experiment if, uh, in our uh, whole laboratory for medium voltage uh, transportation system and uh, that's a tech and medium voltage power electronic systems. That's a technology which we are very proud of and make it as possible to test this technology in house. Uh, the initial test has been in the configuration uh, that we built uh, artificial uh, network with two feeders, the sound feeder and the faulty feeder where we emulated uh, the ground fault. And we did the initial test in the labs at the voltage levels of 3, 10 and finally target 22 kV. Here you can see how danger can be uh, non-compensated the earth fault. So this is uh, the video which proposingly shows um, what can happen in the system if you do not properly compensate the ground fault. Current. Just to illustrate how fast our compensation could be, here you see uh, the generation of the compensation current, here you see the current by the faulty feeder, here you see uh, the current by the sound feeder and uh, the fault is compensated when the currents uh, are of identical phase angle, which you can see that occur very fast. So we, can, we are able to compensate the ground fault below 20 milliseconds. After the laboratory test, we install it, uh, our prototype in a substation 110 to 22 kV and start it, uh, the test in the field. We start with the artificial earth faults on overhead lines. We did uh, the test of all four types, solid one, resistive one, as well as arcing. Here you can see uh, the illustration video of what ha happened uh, when you face the arcing at fault, which uh, was intentionally only partially compensated. And on the second video you can see what is the behavior of the system when our device fully compensates uh, the ground fault. Just a few waveforms. This is uh, the recordings from the solid uh, single phase earth fault. Here you see uh, the phase to ground voltages. Uh, the, uh, this is the place when the fault, uh, earth fault occur. You can uh, clearly see how the zero sequence voltage increase. This is the magenta line. And here you can see how our device immediately react, increasing uh, the compensation current. The magenta one is the total compensation current and uh, remaining uh, waveforms represents the phase currents of the, at the primary winding of the trans converter transformer. We also evaluated the effectivity in comparison uh, of our device in comparison to, to arc suppression coil. Uh, nevertheless, we stress our device by very strict uh, conditions. We turn it off the compensation of the residual current. It means that uh, we turn it off the compensation of uh, active component of fault current as well as higher harmonics because the arc suppression coil is unable to do it. And uh, we also stress uh, uh, our device with uh, specific uh, emulation of the earth fault 
when uh, the earthfall had been emulated on uh, the part of the grid which was switched off there was uh, made uh, the earth fault and then we turn it on this section of the line and of course uh, the fault current uh, occur immediately after the uh, switching on this uh, section of the grid and we were unable because as I said and as I explained it we are identifying uh, the grid impedance in real time under no fault conditions so we were unable uh, to exactly identify the, the, the total grid impedance due to this missing part of the grid so therefore our uh, compensation current was not uh, fully optimal even under, under these unfair conditions our device this is the upper figure significantly outperformed the arc suppression coil the final current has been uh, of half of the residual current uh, for the optimally tuned arc suppression coil In September 2019, we started the autonomous operation of our device in the power grid of 22 kV. So we already passed almost two years of the pilot operation of this device in the real grid operation. We faced up to uh, of around uh, 500 earth fault strikes, which were detected and successfully compensated. We had also the chance uh, to test our device under the extreme conditions where we faced uh, uh, the Sabin storm during the February 2020 in the, in the Czech Republic. The technology contribution. So we offer by our idea and our device very fast and effective fault current compensation. A dynamics is excellent the fault is compensated below 20 milliseconds we are able to secure the full uh, zero residual current it means that we are able to fully compensate the fault current including the active fault current component as well as higher harmonics in the fault current we are able to compensate the arcing and by a special control interventions we are able to prevent new arc ignitions. Compensation current which we are generating has an arbitrary shape and is independent of zero sequence voltage. We are operating the device outside problematic resonant point which uh, improve uh, the symmetricity of the grid voltage and reduce the zero sequence component under uh, trouble free operation. We are able to actively compensate the grid non-symmetry. We are getting the power supply directly from the grid, so we, have, uh, we can offer the full standalone operation. And we are able to generate uh, the positive sequence, zero sequence, as well as negative sequence components of, of the current. We came with the new features to the grid where we are combining the earth fault compensation together with reactive power compensation under no photo operation of the grid. We can secure the active uh, harmonic compensation. We can act like an active power filter. We are able, because we uh, behave like uh, a, a fully controlled current source, which is installed in the system, we can provide the new grid diagnostic features and uh, we uh, offer for, this, uh, for the grid uh, several functions uh, for the digitalization. What is an important uh, result? Our device uh, fully comply with very strict uh, demands by uh, Australian Rapid Earth Fault Current Limiter for minimization of the risk of the fire. So uh, we are able to comply with uh, these strict requirements. What are the future plans? We are at the moment ready for the serial production. We successfully uh, passed the validation of the technology by almost two years long operation in the real power grid. 
The technology has uh, a covered IP by international patents and we already started the negotiation on the sale of the license. So I hope that we will be able uh, to be on the market very soon. The next research directions I see in the new functions for the monitoring and active diagnostic of the grid. Specifically, we are working on the fault localization using our device, which has been already uh, implemented in our device and we are now at the stage of the, the field validation. And I see the big potential in the new features in combination of uh, our device, of our current source with the energy storage system or renewable resources, generally the combination of the power source with our device, which can bring uh, the new features, for example, for the dynamic grid stability, such as peak uh, power shaving, etc. I would like to highly appreciate the effort on my team working on this technology and specifically I would uh, like to highlight uh, two, two gentlemen, Tomáš Komrska and Jakub Tala, which are significantly helping me uh, to push uh, this technology to the final product. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and I am open for your questions.